Member for Barry Innisville. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'm rising on a point of order concerning the status of the New Democratic Party as an opposition party following the announcement of a confidence and supply agreement with the Liberal government. To paraphrase Shakespeare, this NDP Liberal government is a coalition by any other name. While many of our parliamentary procedures refer to recognized parties, others specifically refer to government and opposition parties. This reflects a key feature of constitutional parliamentary government in Canada, as explained at page 4 of the House of Commons Procedure and Practice, 3rd edition. Our rules referring to opposition parties must be carefully interpreted in light of this backroom deal, which has not been put before voters in the last year's election. What does it mean, though, to be in opposition? The Canadian Oxford Dictionary, second edition, defines opposition as, quote, one, resistance, antagonism, two, the state of being hostile or in conflict or disagreement, and three, contrast or antithesis, end quote. Respectfully, I would have said those definitions didn't really describe the NDP yesterday, but they sure don't describe them today. Bosk and Gagnon at page 35 describe how the House is generally organized, quote, functionally the House is divided into three groups, the ministry and its parliamentary secretaries, members who support the government, and members who oppose the government, end quote. The NDP are not in the first group, nor in the last group. They are instead, Mr. Speaker, members who support the government, just like the Liberal backbench. Our former well-respected clerks at the table go on at page 35 to quote Sir Wilfrid Laurier, quote, it is indeed essential for the country that the shades of opinion which are represented on both sides of this house should be placed as far as possible on a footing of equality and that we should have a strong opposition to voice the views of those who do not think with the majority, end quote. Well, the NDP are now part of a parliamentary majority, and I would therefore submit, Mr. Speaker, that by agreeing to participate in the Prime Minister's power grab, the New Democrats have forfeited their rights as an opposition party in this parliament. There are many procedural implications which arise as a result. Most immediately, it means that we cannot vote this afternoon on a motion moved by the member from Burnaby South and which the House debated yesterday. Standing Order 8113 is relevant here, and it begins, quote, opposition motions on allotted days may be moved only by members in opposition to the government, end quote. Put plainly, the member from Burnaby South is no longer a member of the opposition to the government. Therefore, we cannot vote on this so-called opposition motion. Several other rules referring to opposition parties will also require the chair's interpretation. Paragraph 52B of the Parliament of Canada Act provides seats on the Board of Internal Economy for each party with 12 MPs, quote, in opposition in the gov to the government. Therefore, it would seem that the member from New Westminster, Burnby, would no longer be a member of the board, nor would either the member for Gatineau or the member from Brampton North who hold the balancing government seats on the board. Standing Order 33 concerning ministerial statements provides that, quote, a member from each of the parties in opposition to the government may comment briefly thereon, end quote. Standing Order 1062 concerning committee chairs and vice chairs provides that each committee's second vice chair, quote, shall be a member of an opposition party other than the opposition, end quote. By definition, that is now only the members of the Bloc Québécois. Standing Order 81-4 concerning main estimates referred to committees of the whole requires that the leader of the official opposition to consult, quote, with the leaders of the other opposition parties on which departments are so referred. Does the government's coalition partner get a say. And the list goes on, Mr. Speaker. It also follows that we must revisit the uncodified practices of the House in light of these new arrangements. In particular, the allocation of oral questions heavily favors opposition parties. Are the NDP questions now to be treated as lobs, just like those of the three Liberals already get daily? Also, should the NDP be vacating the opposition lobby in the room behind me and joining and joining their coalition
coalition partners over in the government lobby. There are also committee matters to consider, such as the modified quorum rules some committees adopt, sequences for committee witnesses, questioning, and even the seating arrangements at committee tables. These are very important interpretations which are required to allow our parliamentary system to function how it is intended to. You have very little precedent, Mr. Speaker, to rely on because that's how unprecedented this situation is in federal politics. The closest parallel that I can offer the Chair is the situation following the 1921 general election when the upstart Progressive Party captured the second largest number of seats in the House. Many Progressives wanted to form a coalition government with Mackenzie King's Liberals who fell short of a majority. Though in the end the Progressives did not join the Cabinet, they were largely supportive of the government and accordingly declined the opportunity to form the official opposition since they frankly weren't an opposition wow. at all. Just as the 1921 election produced a comfortable arrangement for the Liberal minority government, so too did the election of 2021. We must be guided by the practical and pragmatic conclusion it offered that a party openly supportive of the government is simply not an opposition party. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I would ask that you interpret the rules of the House in a way that recognizes that the New Democratic Party has ceased to be an opposition party and that the House cannot vote today on the motion that was debated yesterday. Thank you. Mr.